Um, so welcome and thanks for joining. We'll be talking about uh, upstreaming Fedora Core OS. So my name is Clément Verna. I'm one of the engineering managers working with the Core OS team. And today we'll talk about this with um, Ellen. So hi, I'm Ellen. I'm a product owner on the um, Core OS team as well. Um, so yeah, we'll get started. Um, yeah, so we're going to talk a little bit about uh, what is Fedora Core OS, um, how we're making it and testing it right now, um, and future plans with where we're going uh, with it. Um, yeah, so what is Fedora Core OS? Um, so we're now an official Fedora edition. Um, so we, be we became a, an official Fedora edition in Fedora 37. Um, together with Workstation, IoT, Cloud, ser cloud and Server. Um, so this means we're more integrated with the Fedora release process, um, including release blocker and go no go processes. Um, so we focus on single node clusters in use cases. Um, we're a successor of two container first OSs, which was CoreOS in, in Container Linux and Fedora Atomic Host. Um, so we've incorporated ideas from both provisioning stack and cloud native expertise and Fedora Foundation and Upstack SE Linux. Um, so the ph philosophy of CoreOS comes from um, the merge between Container Linux and Atomic Host. So the idea was to take the best of each project, which resulted in the following key values. So the first of which was automatic update. So this was something that only Fedora Core OS does in Fedora. Um, the idea is for FCOS users to not have to worry about the OS. Um, automated provisioning, so it makes it easier to have one or a thousand nodes that are the same. Um, and then immutable infrastructure, which leverage, leverages the OS tree technology to make it easier for the update nodes. Um, so our release model is different compared to other Fedora variants. Um, so instead of major releases every six months, FCOS releases every two weeks on, different, on three different systems. Um, this differs from other Fedora editions. The model is linked to the automatic updates. So in order for users to use automatic updates, this has to be stable in order to not put pressure on the system. And this allows testing in advance of the stable stream to avoid issues. Um, so, we were supported on many platforms, um, and a few of those are now integrated into our automated testing. Um, so, some of those are uh, cloud or uh, vert platforms, and some of those are bare metal options. Um, so, some of the automatic testing happens during our release process on S86 or AOR64. Um, we also have bills on S390X. Um, but we don't have automated testing on those yet. Um, so it's just some of the statistics um, on some of the nodes. So the red line you're seeing there is the transcendent line, and the blue is the static line. Um, so the transcendent are including systems that have been live for less than one week. The static is systems that have been live for more than a week. Um, the dip in the graph you're seeing there um, was due to an infrastructure issue that we had. Um, the number of core OS instances are coming up um, and continuing to grow. So we're reaching over 40,000 instances, out of which 30,000 of those are up for more than one week. Um, so just some statistics on Fedora releases. Um, so you can see the success of the automated updates. The majority of the SCOF instances are running on the latest version of Fedora. Um, so why can we see older versions of Fedora? Of Fedora? Um, so the OKG, so the community version of OpenShift is using FCOS. Updates are managed by the OKG admin and a specific version of OKG is tied to a major version of Fedora. Um, and for the architecture, um, some of these are very popular on x86 and AR64. Um, FCOS is the most popular Fedora variant um, on AR64 at the moment. Okay, so I'll hand you over to Clement. Thanks. Yeah, so um, the uh, wanted to take a deep dive a little bit 
uh, into how the Fedora chorus is, uh, is released and the release engineering. Um, since we don't have like the same model, release model as other uh, Fedora variants, uh, we have a, a bit of a different process. Um, so yeah, how does a package update runs in, in Fedora? So we'll see the beginning is very uh, traditional. It all starts with a, a commit in this git where the packager will update uh, their software, Koji build, body update, and it reaches the stable repos of Fedora. Then that's where the Fedora core OS magic source happens. Um, in Fedora core OS, we have like this concept of log files. Uh, talk a bit more about it. Uh, then we do our Fedora core OS build, Fedora core OS test, and then uh, release. Uh, let's look at this uh, in a bit more visual um, way. So uh, commit in this git, like I just took the example of OpenSSL, Packager will do this work, build it in Koji, then push the update in, in body. Uh, as you can see, the update reaches the stable repo, so now it's available for every users in Fedora. Uh, the thing is that up to this point, it, it's, this update has never seen a Fedora core OS uh, system. Like We went through a lot of testing, People have been uh, providing feedback on body, but this has not been seen by, uh, by Fedora Core OS. Um, yeah, so that's a big, big point we, we want to try to, to work on, is that really um, the Fedora Core OS release cycle comes quite late in, in, the, in the packager process. Um, so to get this uh, stability uh, for Fedora Core OS and to try to keep like uh, user to use uh, automated updates, we really we have like this system of log files. When we're going to for each uh, release of Fedora Core OS, we're just going to fix the package versions. So, uh, for example, if we go back to the OpenSSL, we're going to say that in the next. Uh, stable stream of Fedora Core OS, we're going to ship with OpenSSL 3.084. And that's going to be the fixed version for two weeks. And then two weeks later, when you get a new uh, automated update, you're going to get a new version. Um, so that's really the, how it's done. Everything is stored in, uh, in a Git repository on GitHub, so you can, you can have a look at, uh, at that. And you can really have like uh, all the versions of all the packages uh, that are provided in, in Fedora Core OS. Um, so, yeah. Uh, to do this, we have like, um, we have a, a robot file, like um, a, a bot that just that uh, periodically. And it will just like look at the new builds that are, uh, that are pushed on the stable repository in Fedora and bump those, uh, like create uh, the commit automatically. Once we have this, we have a scheduled test job that runs uh, every day. And that's the first time pretty much that we're going to try to build a new version of Fedora Core OS with the new uh, content. Um, so you can see it's a Jenkins pipeline. So we got like different stages. We fetch the new content, build the new OS3, uh, signed OS3, and then we build the QMU image to start to do our testing. Uh, in Fedora Core OS, the, most of the uh, test uh, that we are doing, it's using uh, Cola, which is just a, a test runner uh, that we maintain and, de and, deploy and develop. Um, and in, in the happy, happy path cases, everything works. And sometimes there's just like, we start to have like tests that are failing. So at that case, there is quite a lot of uh, investigation that needs to happen to understand, okay, we've like the, the new updates that we've consumed from Fedora Stable, what has changed to cause the failure in, uh, in the Fedora Core OS test. Um, so if we go back to like the release process, you can see that the feedback loop comes quite late in the process. We really only start to test uh, for FCOS, Q1, 
quite late. So if we have to make any change or if like an update in a package is actually breaking test for Fedora Core OS, we can only provide the feedback a long time after the packager did, did the work. So what are our options uh, in the release engineering? Uh, we have three options. So if there is a failure first, it's like the investigations. So we'll try to, we open a, a bug, say, okay, this test started to fail, start to look at it, try to do the, the diff, okay, which packages have changed, uh, which package could be the, the cause of the failure in the test. If it's an upstream issue with the, with the update, we can just then file a bug, bugzilla, or GitHub issue with the, with the upstream. So yeah, like this is a recent case where uh, a change in systemd broke um, uh, Fedora Core OS. So we'll report the issue, it will get fixed and uh, uh, upstream and then flow down in, in Fedora. Um, we have the possibility also with our test uh, test runner to snooze test. So if we if we see that the test starts to fail, but it's not necessarily something very important that we don't consider is going to to break the stability of the system, we can say okay, let's let's uh, snooze or like uh, ignore that test for the next week or so by the time to to get the, to get it fixed. But we are not going to block the the release. Um, if it's a package or a bug that is a bit more important, uh, like for example, like the system D1, um, we have the ability to lock the package to a previous version. Um, so uh, if a system D update is breaking uh, Fedora Core OS, say, okay, we have identified a bug there, we're waiting for upstream to fix it. Uh, but for the next release of Fedora Core OS, we're going to release uh, Fedora Core OS with the previous version that was working uh, of systemd. So that's where the log, file syst uh, the log files that we have, syst the system of log files is quite useful because we can, we can then play with the versions uh, that, we, that we release to users and keep that stability. Um, we have also the ability of uh, fast tracking an update. So if we know that um, a bug fix that we are waiting for is already in body, waiting for, uh, for people to test it, and uh, it has not reached the stable repos uh, already. Uh, we can fast track that update and take it from body. Uh, we, we can like reference the body update and take the, the actual version and release this uh, in Fedora Core OS before it reach uh, Fedora stable. So that's where like, uh, also we have like all those different streams uh, for users. Uh, users will be very uh, familiar with the next testing and stable streams, but we have also development streams. So we have a ROID stream that really try to get us like an early feedback on the changes happening in ROID. So we try to test early and get uh, to see uh, what is going to break uh, Fedora Core OS in the future. And we have the next devil and testing devil, which is where a lot of like those nightly builds uh, are happening and where we run our, our CI and, and the test. Um, I think we can, we consider it a little bit like our main development branch. Uh, it's where like the development is happening. Um, and yeah, for user, the next and testing streams are really where we encourage people to test and provide feedback and uh, uh, tell us in advance like if something stopped working for, for their system or their workload. So what we would like to try to improve um, in the next um, Fedora releases, it's how we can try to upstream uh, our testing and it's all about feedback loop. I, I talked a bit about that. And uh, I quite like this thing. It's like wh when are feedback loop better? When they are shorter. Um, so um, as we seen previously, we were only testing 
uh, quite late in all the process. And here the idea is to try to provide a very early feedback when the packager is building his, uh, his package in Koji, trigger a Fedora core OS build, run a subset of our Fedora core OS test, and loop that feedback back on the body update. So the packager would know when he creates the updates in body, if his update has impacted the Fedora core OS build or not. Um, the idea is really to try to reduce a lot of the effort that goes into investigating why the tests are failing late in the development cycle and have the feedback directly on the update. So instead of having to uh, look at which package was the root cause of the issue or like to do some diff and look at, uh, at, uh, at the differences, uh, we would directly know in body, we would be able to see like, okay, well, when uh, systemd or the latest kernel came, it actually broke that test for, for Fedora Core OS and there is a lot less investigation needed. Um, so how would we be able to do that? Actually, it it's, uh, should be relatively easy. <laughs> it's like a between <laughs> quote marks, but uh, a lot of the infrastructure is already in place uh, because uh, we already have like uh, testing on updates and it's about like trying to plug our uh, Fedora Core OS release engineering testing to plug that into the rest of the testing infrastructure used by, by Fedora. Um, So there is um, a system called Result DB, which is really a database with all the results that are uh, with all the test results that are run um, on updates and on on compose. Uh, so for us, it would be interesting to do uh, to look at updates and when um, pretty much when the Koji build is um, is started um, or when the Koji build is successful. Uh, we would have like a Fedora uh, messages message that we would catch, trigger our Fedora core OS testing, and report the result of those tests into results DB. And then body is, uh, is able to, um, uh, body will be able to get the results through result DB and uh, display that on the update. So this is already working for other tests. Um, and you can see, uh, Pretty much here, we, for each update, we already run a, a quite a lot of tests for just like other variants of Fedora. So instead of having, for example, update-based system logging, we could have like something like update Fedora core OS, um, like kernel test or, or whatever. So like the packager would be able to see on their update uh, if there is any failures or like if there are any also required tests uh, that failed and, and so on. So, um, for if you are not familiar with like the the tests that have like a small um, star or asterisk, um, are tests that the packager um, marked as required uh, for the update to be able to be pushed to stable. So that's like the gating. Uh, yeah, Adam. They're not marked by the packager. Um, okay. Those are that's a distro-wide policy uh, for those. Okay, so yeah, they, so they are not marked by, by the packages, but they are like distro-wide policies where there are like some gating required tests for, for updates. So, thanks. So yeah, the, the big difference is that we would run all the Fedora CoS tests before the package, uh, packages are committed in Fedora repos. So if it breaks Fedora Core OS, it would not uh, reach uh, stable, um, and it would let the packagers get that early feedback and know how uh, their update impacted Fedora Core OS. And it avoids a lot of like uh, later work into communication, going back, say, okay, yeah, this was already in stable, but it, it broke that, uh, that build, like can we get it fixed, and so on. So. Um, it's really trying to, to save a lot of time uh, for people working on, on, uh, on packages.
Um, so, Um, so how do we gate packages that fail in CoreOS CI tests? Um, so we enforce passing Fedora CoreOS uh, tests before pushing updates. Um, so it's critical to make RPM OS3 variants a first class citizen in Fedora. Um, this will benefit from RPM OS3 based variants like CoreOS, IoT, Silverblue, um, etc. Um, so future considerations, um, so building a common and minimal shared Fedora core, minimal OS3 image, um, either to use as a base for other variants to layer packages on top of, or it could be used um, to create other OS3 commits. Um, right. um, thank you very much, and does anybody have any questions? Uh, is it on? Yep, yep. Uh, so I have some more detailed things which I'll come and talk to you after, but I'm curious, how long does your pipeline take? So it all depends how much testing we want to do. Uh, <laughs> I think the idea for like the original idea would be to run just a subset of core tests that we think are, are important. Um, and it would probably, I don't know, be less than an hour, like between 30 minutes, 30 minutes to an hour. Okay. That's good. Yeah, thanks. Thank you. Uh, th thank you for providing us insight into how Federal CoreOS works. Uh, so since my background is providing feedback, like from downstream to upstream, uh, I can see that's an improvement, what you proposed, uh, to provide feedback when the build is done. But honestly, I don't think that's enough. Like, I feel that in one or two years, we would be seeing presentation when you go even further. So I'm just, uh, like, thinking about uh, if, if we could do something better, like, for example, providing that feedback when the upstream release is created or even in pull requests or, some, uh, or like, going that far. Yeah, that's, I think that's, <laughs> that's definitely maybe a talk for <laughs> the next two years. Um, uh, there's a saying that I like, it's like, how do you eat an elephant? It's like one spoon at the time. <laughs> so like that's the small step uh, forward to, uh, I think we're in the situation where we really want to try to like integrate a bit better. Like, as I said, the infrastructure is there already. So this is maybe like a low effort, high impact a step that we can take forward. But yeah, I definitely think that this shouldn't be uh, the end of, like if we put that in place, that shouldn't be the end of the effort and like go even more, like uh, shortening even more like the feedback loop, yeah, definitely. So I have a question. So I'm, I don't know, maybe it's too um, in the weeds, but, um, and feel free to say that I can talk to you guys after. But um, with the Podman desktop team, so we rely on FCOS for delivering Podman on yeah. Mac and Windows. And one of the issues we run into sometime with releases is Podman desktop has a release cycle, um, Podman does, and FCOS does. So what ends up happening, like when Podman 4.6 came out, it seemed to just have missed, like by a day or two, an FCOS release. So then we're waiting for it to go to stable and Bodhi for like a week. And mm -hmm. then the next FCOS release is another, and it's like we've made a release and then our users will not get the latest Podman that the you know, release announcement went out for like a month. And I'm just wondering, I'm, I'm intrigued by your new model of having an additional test build. Mm -hmm. And I'm wondering what are the implications there? Can that somehow help speeding this up or is it orthogonal? Um. I think what would help a lot is, so it's, it's not necessarily tied to the feedback loop and doing our testing earlier, but it's more like having a minimal Fedora core OS3 image that could have like a different life cycle or have like just follow the normal six months 
uh, release of, of Fedora and you get the updates just like uh, normally. And this could be like a base for all OS3 systems, so Fedora IoT, Fedora Core OS. It could become like what actually is consumed by the, the Podman uh, desktop team. And um, yeah, I think that could be something to, to explore if it fits better. Like the li life cycles and <laughs> release uh, cadence is a, is a tough topic, I think, to try to align everything. But um, yeah, I think we have some ideas around trying to to have like that core set of packages that is useful in all the, the and that could have a different life cycle or like uh, consume the updates in a different way. One mother, I see that's a future consideration. Does that mean will happen or? <laughs> I think we definitely have the idea to do it. Uh, so you know, it's still like uh, the core S group is uh, uh, like, um, still part of the like, um, like change process and so on. So that would be something we have, to, we have to propose to the community, to have discussions and see if there is interest. And, um, but yeah, that's definitely something that uh, has been in people working like, very closely to CoreOS's uh, mind in the la last uh, few years. So. Um, thanks for the presentation. Uh, I have two questions here. So first up, how would Fedora Core be exactly different from Fedora Minimal, except for the base that that is going to be OS tree based? Mm -hmm. So would there be significant difference between what Fedora Minimal today is and Fedora Core would be? Uh, so when you mean Fedora Minimal, you mean like in the, the, the container yeah. image? Yep. Well, first, there will be the kernel, <laughs> since yeah. in the container image you don't have the kernel. But yeah, that, that could be a good start. Uh, it would differ from Fedora Core OS in terms of, like in Fedora Core OS, we have a lot of, uh, so for example, we have Podman, we have Docker, we have things that are very opinionated to run containers, mm -hmm. where uh, in the Fedora Core minimal OS3, we would not necessarily have this. I think we would look at what's the bare minimal to have uh, an operating system that boots almost and then let user uh, or users or different working group or editions customize that to their uh, to their needs so yeah it could be like the the package set that is in the container minimal image could be a good start for, for that okay uh, I have another question which is currently when uh, cola tests they kind of up Great, if you will, from one particular stream to another particular stream, like 38, 39, so on and so forth. But uh, with automatic updates, you can go from 35 to 39 all the way. But in recent past, that has failed. Like there was an error with migrating from 35 to 39. So is this going to fix it? Um, I think for, so when we have like um, updates, like for example, yeah, as you mentioned, like from 35 to 38. Uh, so there is a, a mechanism that I, I didn't put in the slide. But we have like a barrier release, so we can we can force uh, the system to go through a specific update. So mm -hmm. we would have like so you wouldn't jump directly from 35 to 39. We would first update the system from 35 maybe to 36 because it it needs to happen. Then 36, 37, and so on. Uh, so we have that, that concept. Um, in terms of having earlier feedback preventing that, I don't think that's like the, that would be like the end goal, but that might help. I think like, you know, if we are able to catch like bugs earlier and prevent package to go to stables because they, they broke some of those updates, that would help, but I, I don't think that would be a catch hole. I think we we could still have like uh, cases where uh, where like uh, yeah, swi switching from a major to another major would would bring some some issues. All right, thank you. Anybody else have questions? A lot of questions. <laughs> I walked in right during the count me thing, which is relevant to my interests. Uh, do you, and this connects to Podman Desktop, do you have a, 
um, estimate of how many of the running CoreOS systems reporting in there are Podman desktop? <clears throat> nope. <laughs> um, no, yeah, it's hard to. Well, you you know that. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah, it's hard to had a differentiate. Different, uh, way of knowing the Podman desktop thing from the Podman. Yeah. Metric. No, because they yeah they just use like a stock Fedora core image, so they, they report the, uh, as as CoreOS. Um, I wonder if we could try to do some. I'm I'm just wondering now in which uh, seg uh, segment they, they sit like. Are those systems that live longer than one week or not? No idea. <laughs> yeah, I'm not so sure. We, we, we can, I think maybe like this we could try to get some kind of rough ideas, but it, we, yeah, we, we don't necessarily have like a very... So if we move to that core minimal image, then mm. could that be built that could as be, Podman yeah. machine with some mm. kind of metadata that then you could track it? Yeah. Any other questions? Give me a workout. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> um, <laughs> this question is a little um, tangentially related to the talk, but there's a request for um, Silver Boost support on a new platform. And I'm thinking if, if we started working on that today, it might be. Um, on which platform, sorry? On Silver Blue? It's. It's specifically the Asahi platform, but it could be any platform. Um, that's, that's just an example. Um, so I, I've seen Colin do a couple of talks on, on Bootsy as the new way for OS3 based operating system. If you're porting some of this OS3 based stuff to a new platform and say you're thinking it might be ready Fedora 40 ish. Um, should you bite the bullet and start looking into Bootsy, or I know that's bleeding yeah. edge stuff. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, that's a big topic. So um, I don't know how many people are familiar with like the work that Colin Walter has been doing. Uh, there is two topics, like there is Bootsy and OS3 native containers. Uh, I think. What you're mentioning is more on like OS3 native concept on containers, uh, which the rough idea is that you, you treat your operating system just as an OCI container. So uh, you would have a base. So coming back to this minimal um, core OS3 um, uh, definition. Uh, so this could be like a Fedora OS3 core image that we provide as a container image, which is an OS3 system. It's, um, it, it's, uh, it, yeah, it's just an OS3. It's all the, the root, root file, um, the root FS, the root file system of, of your system. And uh, you can just use that in a Docker file. So you would say from Fedora OS3 minimal, and then run your command in your Docker file to customize that. So, if you need a specific kernel for a specific platform, you could then like RPM OS3 replace uh, the Fedora kernel with the kernel that you need for a specific platform, and so on. Um, so the there is a lot of work happening now around this. It's still a bit uh, fresh, but I think that's like the future of, uh, that's definitely the future of how we want to release uh, all, well, at least Fedora Core OS, but I think long term all the OS3 variants. And Bootsy is related to this in a way where this is what allows you to install and deploy those container OS3 images. Like, um, so they are linked, but not necessarily like the same thing. Um, so Bootsy would, would mean that for, you, you can start from any like Fedora variant or editions. So you could even start like from your Fedora workstation on the platform use Bootsy to convert that Fedora workstation into silver blue uh, for, for that platform. Um, 
I think that's an over talk. Where <laughs> there is a lot of, of details to, to go okay, into yeah. that. But we we can talk about it if you want after. Yeah. Okay. Any other questions? Awesome. Thanks, everyone.